Hi, I'm Solar Steve Esquire. I am the owner of Phoenix Solar Panel Systems. Today, we're going to talk about APS solar price plans. We install in 30 states across the country, and I've been doing solar about five years. I'm also a lawyer. I practice law as a family lawyer here in the Phoenix, Arizona area for seven years. And um, I transitioned into solar, and now I'm running my solar company here. And basically, my goal is to provide people with uh, a transparent look into residential solar and to educate uh, future solar owners. Uh, it's geared towards homeowners that are looking into solar and thinking about going solar at their home. home. And so today, we're going to be talking specifically about the Phoenix, Arizona area, and more specifically, in the APS utility. This is APS is short for Arizona Public Service. And so in the Phoenix area, what we Phoenicians, I'm a native uh, born here in Phoenix, what we call the Valley. Uh, there's, there's two utilities. It's either APS or SRP. And so APS uh, covers the north and west part of the Valley generally. And I'm going to show you a little map here. You can see that What's in white is APS. So this is APS in the north area here and then in the west side as well. And so a lot of APS solar systems are on the west side in cities like Surprise and Sun City and El Mirage, Youngtown, Goodyear, Buckeye, places like that, but also parts of Phoenix and Scottsdale and Paradise Valley uh, and Glendale are also in APS as well. So that is what we're going to cover today and i'm going to jump right into it so first of all first of all I'll talk about it's important to understand the two different price plans that aps offers offers after you go solar because that's going to help you save the most amount of money and so we're going to talk about two price plans both are what we call time of use plans and so a time of use utility plan basically as an off-peak time and then an on-peak time. And so, and this goes for utilities across the country. And so during on-peak, they're gonna charge you more money during that on-peak time. This is generally in the afternoon when people are getting home from work and when there's gonna be the most amount of electricity used uh, off the grid. And with the price plans that APS offers after solar, the on-peak is 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. during weekdays. There's no on-peak on weekends, and sometimes they exclude some holidays as well, but generally it's Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So during on-peak, what you pay for energy is gonna be more than what you pay during off-peak, which is pretty much all other times outside of on-peak. And so the utility measures how you use energy by kilowatt hours. And we don't need to get into specifically what a kilowatt hour is, but it's basically how they measure how much energy is used in your home. And so um, what APS is going to do is, is measure your kilowatt hours and they'll charge more per kilowatt hour during on peak than they will off peak outside of that on peak 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. area. So here are my screens here and these are the two uh, solar price plans that APS offers. This is on their website. And the first one is the time of use plan. The second is the time of use with demand charge. Now let's talk about what a demand charge is. So a demand charge is something based upon the demand that your home is using. And demand is how much energy is used simultaneously in your home. If we're measuring kilowatt hours, we're basically measuring how much energy is used over a period of time in your home. A demand charge or a load, so it, sometimes they call it demand, sometimes they call it load, it means the same thing. It's the amount of energy your home is simultaneously using. And this is measured in kilowatts instead of kilowatt hours. So it, these can be easily confused. But a demand is or a load is 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 measured in kilowatts. And so what the demand charge is, is APS is going to look at how much energy you use simultaneously in your home during on-peak times. And so I'm going to bust out my calculator here. And so you have 22 weekdays in the month, right? And 
on peak is 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's three hours each on peak time, right? And so um, if you do 22 times, th uh, sorry, 22 times three, let's try that again, 22 times three, you're going to get 66 hour intervals of on peak time during the month. And so what on this on this plan here that has a demand charge, the second plan, APS is going to watch every 60 all 66 hours and they're going to charge you a demand charge based on the very highest one. So we can get into this more when I discuss that plan, but basically what you need to know about a demand charge is you can be good and not using your large appliances and energy during your home for 65 hours of the month of on peak but if if just one time you're you're you forget and you use more large appliances and you get a high demand charge they're going to charge you based on that that one time not the rest of them and so it's kind of a it's a, it's an unforgiving charge this demand charge it doesn't matter what you use for the entire month they're just going to look at the very highest one here in Phoenix, everyone has at least one air conditioning unit for the home. And so one air conditioning unit is going to use between about two to four kilowatts of energy of demand. And so other large appliances that are electric, like an electric stove, an electric dryer, an electric dishwasher, an electric water heater, electric, you know, those are pretty much the main ones right there. Those are going to use also some maybe between one and three kilowatts of demand each. And so during on peak, generally what you want to do is you want to avoid using all of these, all of these large appliances simultaneously. Because if you do, you can spike your demand up maybe to 10 kilowatts. You're going to get a very high demand charge for that month. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that more once I'm talking about that plan. So we're going to go to the APS website here. And first, I'm going to talk about the time of use plan. So the time of use plan basically works. It's, it's going to be 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. weekdays is going to be your on-peak time. So you can see their little graph here. Outside of 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. weekdays, it's, it's considered off-peak, including weekends. And so... You can see that APS is charging uh, 10.789 cents during off-peak times. And then on-peak, they're charging 29.78 cents. This is, again, per kilowatt hour. So that's a pretty large difference. That's On-peak is three times the amount. This is during the summer, which is May to October. During the winter, um, they throw in another zone called the super off-peak, which is 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and they're going to charge 3.166 cents per kilowatt here. This is generally when no one uses energy. And so you have the regular off-peak. It's slightly different at 10.79 cents. And then on-peak during the winter is slightly less at 28.185 cents. So, And then winter is going to be November to April. So that's how they're going to charge you for energy um, with the time of use solar plan. And, you know, there's a large misconception that people have. They think when they go solar, they're not going to need to get any energy from the utility. That's not true. When you go solar, you're still hooked up to the APS grid, right? And you're still going to need to take energy from APS's grid. One example of that is at nighttime. The solar system is not generating any power, so you're going to have to take energy from APS's grid at night if you were running any electricity through your home, like lights or any other appliances. Also especially in the summertime, especially in the summertime, you're, you're with the air conditioning running, your solar system is not designed to provide energy, uh, all the energy your home needs in the summertime in Phoenix, because the air conditioning draws a lot of energy. And this is especially true in the afternoon during those on peak times. So during the day in the summertime, generally using all the power that your solar system can create, plus you're also using some, some power from APS's grid. And it depends on the time of day and what appliances you're using in the home, if the air conditioning is running or not. And so you, this is called a solar, a grid tied system. You're still connected to the grid. And that's actually the law here in Phoenix. You cannot have a solar system here in Phoenix while not be connected, while not still being connected to the grid. 
So in, in APS, that's how it works. And so um, any energy that your solar system doesn't create, you're going to have to buy from APS. And you either buy it or you're using some of your export credits because when you're hooked up to APS, if you use energy in your home, if you generate energy from your solar system that you don't use, it's then going to export that to APS's grid, which they sell to their customers, which they'll give you a credit for. So uh, in any event, you're going to be drawing energy from APS's grid after you go solar. So let's like let's take a look at the the next plan. And you can see that APS, before we do, you can see that APS also, um, that warns their customers to not use a lot of appliances, especially simultaneously during on peak, which is 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. They're basically saying, shift the use of your large appliances over the entire day instead of using them just between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. They say this specifically because 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. is when people usually have dinner and they get home from work. And so, you know, if people are using their microwave and their electric stove and their dishwasher and their television and all these things from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., which in on this plan, the energy use is, is charged at much higher, they're going to see higher bills. So APS is saying, spread out the use of your appliances. Don't use them all during 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So let's go to the, the next plan with the demand charge. So what you're going to see here is that the plan with the demand charge is going to have lower uses charges, but they're going to throw the demand charge in. And that's generally how it works with utilities across the country. You're going to have some plans that have high uses charges, but no demand charge or a low demand charge. And you're going to have some plans that have low uses charges, but high demand charges. And this is how APS does it with their two plans. And so again, APS is going to warn people especially with this plan with the demand charge you don't want to use any other large appliances during the air conditioning uh you don't want to, you don't want to use any other large appliances except the air conditioning during on peak which is 4 p.m to 7 p.m weekdays and so if you want to save even more money if you have solar and APS you won't use the air conditioning you'll turn the air conditioning off from 4 p.m to 7 p.m and so you might do something where you get your house down to like 72, it switches off at 4 p.m., the temperature is going to rise, and then it switches back on after after 7 p.m. And so that's what we call super cooling. That's a way to save even more money because then you're not really drawing much power at all from, from APS uh, in the summertime during on peak. And so you can see here that APS's uses charges with this time of use plan with demand charge are quite a bit lower. The off peak is 5 cents compared to 10 cents of the other plan. The on peak is 12 cents compared to 30 cents of the other plan, right? So quite a bit less expensive. But we got our demand charge in the summer, which is May to October, they've got that $16 and 16.875 uh per kilowatt demand charge, right? In the winter it's similar setup with the super off peak from 10, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. But then the off peak is around 5 cents, on peak around 8.7 cents. And so you're seeing an even lower drop in the on peak rate. And then in the winter, the demand charge is less at 11, 11, uh, $11 and 8.845 cents, right? And so uh let, let's let's get into a little bit more of what this demand charge can look like we already know that it's going to be it's going to be they're looking at one out of 66 hour intervals for the entire month right and so say in the summertime i'm going to take out my calculator here say say for the entire month all 66 intervals you keep your demand charge below four kilowatts right so it's at four so we do four times 16.875 it's going to be a $67.50 demand charge, right? But say for just one of those on peak times, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. during the weekdays, you were running your air conditioner, you're running your electric stove, your electric dishwasher, your electric water heater, your electric dryer, your microwave, things like this. And say your, kill, your demand gets above 10. So now we're going to do 10. If you just do that once during the entire month, during on peak, it's gonna you'll get that demand charge for the entire month. It doesn't matter 
how good you were and not using your appliances the rest of the month during on peak. They're just looking at the very highest. So we'll do 10 uh, multiplied by 16.875. Now you're looking at $168 demand charge. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference there. You're going from, um, you know, four times uh, 16.875, 67. So we're, we're seeing a hundred dollar increase. So that's going to increase your bill by a hundred dollars, um, in the summer. And it, it'll probably increase it more because if you're using those large appliances during on peak, it means you're also going to have higher usage charges, right? And so that's why it's important to understand the demand charge. Now with these two different plans with APS, the one with the demand charge, the time of use with the demand charge is going to allow you to save more money because your usage charges are less, right? I mean, in in the summertime, they're, the off-peak is half price and the on-peak is nearly a third of the price. It's 12 cents versus 30 cents. In the winter, off-peak is half price and then on-peak is nearly four to uh, a quarter of the price right and so you can save more money once you go solar with this time of use with the demand charge but you're gonna have to be very careful from 4 p.m to 7 p.m during the weekdays not to use any other appliances besides your air conditioner and so this this is a lot more difficult than it sounds right especially uh, people think to themselves oh yeah i can control that i can control what large appliances i use for the month uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's really not that simple. Say if someone lives alone and they have complete control over the amount of appliances they use and they're very disciplined and uh, it's possible that they can go all 66 on peak hours during the month and only use the air conditioning and never turn on another large appliances from 4 PM to 7 PM. It's possible. They're not going to be able to really cook during 4 PM, 7 PM, which is dinner time. They're not gonna be able to, you know, dry their clothes, wash their dishes, uh, maybe, you know, things like this, maybe take a shower because that's going to use the electric water heater, right? That's possible. But if there's more than one person living in the home, especially if there's like two parents and a family, it, it's impossible to avoid a high demand charge because you can't, the person responsible for the bill can't control how everyone else in the home uses the energy. Uh, the kids are going to use various appliances, the spouse will use various appliances. If there's other family members, they're going to use various appliances. So if people have that situation in their house, it's best just to go with the time of use plan that doesn't have a demand charge. That's going to save them the most amount of money. However, if someone, uh, maybe there's one or two people in the house and they're disciplined and they're educated about how the demand charge works, they can go with the demand charge, time of use with demand charge plan, and they can save the most amount of money that way. So that's really how it works uh, in APS and and how you're going to save the most amount of money. All right, so um, that's gonna that's everything for the APS or price plans. We talked about the two price plans, the demand charge and the uses charges. And so uh, we talked about how you're going to save the most amount of money and which plan you should choose depending on your situation. And so if you have any questions, you can contact me at Steve at Phoenix Solar Panel Systems.com. That's my website, Phoenix Solar Panel Systems.com. And there'll be some contact information in the description of the video. Uh, go ahead and comment or ask me any questions that you have. And good luck searching for solar for your home. Call us at 602 753 0560 for a free consultation today.